Nidit version 5.6 built with Motif version 2.3.8 running on Motif Window Manager. For this software review I'll be looking at a small but powerful text editor called Nidit, short for Nirvana Editor, which was originally released in 1992. The latest stable release was in 2017 with the latest being version 5.7. Initially created by Mark Edel for Fermilab, it is licensed under the GPL with what is known as a Motive Clause. Right. Here we are editing a text file, which also happens to be the uh, script for this particular review. I, I need to use a script because it keeps me on topic and uh, stops me from rambling on. Uh, but in this instance, we're editing this text file, which is the script. Uh, and as you can see, Nedit is relatively um, sparse in its menu and its window decorations. Uh, you've got seven main uh, options at the top, with an eighth one at the other end, which is uh, quite a comprehensive uh, help section, which we'll be looking at in a minute. Uh, the file, well, it does what you expect it to do. Um, it brings up various options to uh, save, load, create new uh, files, either in the same window as a tab or as a new uh, window. You can close, uh, refer to save, so that means if you make a mistake, you know, you can, you can go back to the, what you've saved. Include file, if you want to merge two files together. Uh, load macro file, which is interesting. Load tags file. Uh, so we're going to unload tags file once you've loaded them in. Load call tips file, and again unload once you've loaded it in. The print and print selection. So if I go to that, print selection is now available. And exit. This is self-explanatory, and as you can see down the right-hand side of the menu, you've got the shortcut keys for those who don't like to go to the menu. Secondly, we've got the edit menu uh, entry. Again, pretty standard. Undo, redo, cut, copy, paste, paste column, which is interesting. And delete. Uh, select all, shift left. You can move text around quite interestingly if you want to, uh, if you share, change your mind. You could copy and paste, but you can achieve the same thing by copy and pasting, but this makes it slightly easier. Change uh, a selection to lowercase or uppercase, fill paragraph. Insert from feed and insert control code. And that's if you're doing uh, some programming. Or old-fashioned printer, I do believe, or what my granddaddy used to say. The search, again, it's uh, for those who are familiar with a word processor or a text editor, they're fairly standard. Um, everything's there that you need. Got find, find again, find selection, find incremental, uh, replace, replace, find again, and replace again. Go to line number, go to selection, mark, go to mark, go to matching, which is which is quite an interesting feature. Find definition and show call tip. Hmm. The preferences one is perhaps uh, one where everything can be tweaked to your particular liking. You get within the preference, you get sub menus, which takes you to uh, everything which you can. Change about Nedit to uh, your own liking. So everything can customize the menus. You can customize the fonts, the, the background, the color of everything. Really, uh, I like it fairly default. Um, it works for me just right. So, but you know, if you wanted a pink background with purple text, then you know you can do that. Uh, your command shell, which lets you change uh, which shell you would like. As I mentioned before, I have my command shell changed to uh, SH. But if uh, if you want to stick with the CSH, you can do that. If you want to do KSH, 
you know, it, it's all good. And that's where you would actually uh, put your own preferences. Um, but yeah, everything is it's quite a comprehensive preference. I think you can change the language mode, everything really. It's uh, it's pretty good. And even for the initial window size, if you want it to start up on a larger window, it's fairly good. The save defaults will save the selection that you've just made as the default um, the next time you start the application up. Statistics line will give you a quick rundown of how you're doing, which uh, path directory you're saving to. Show line numbers, you know, incremental search line, show line numbers, language mode. Yeah, it's, it's fairly good. It's fairly good. Over, I mean, you've got basic things like overtype and read only, but. and word drop too. And auto indent. So your preferences are quite comprehensive. And really would be uh, beyond the scope of this small review to go into every single feature. I think the best way to just, you know to look at it is install it yourself and have a look at it. It doesn't hurt. And if you don't like it, you can delete it. But have a look at it, play around with it, tweak it to your settings, and I think it'll grow on you. It's an oldie, but it's a goodie. And, you know, the best way is just to get hands on, have a try. The next menu entry is Shell. Uh, with this one, you can execute commands without starting up another terminal window. Although, you know, to be truthful, it's not really such a big deal just to start up a new X term. Uh, if you want to execute something. But say for instance you have this filling the screen. You might not want uh, the distraction of starting up another time. I, mean, I don't know why, I mean it doesn't bother me, but you know, if you run a dual display it's not a problem, but if you have one single screen and this is filling your entire screen and you want to concentrate, but you also want to issue a command, I can see why this might come in useful. I do remember that this was actually developed way back in, you know, initial development in 92. Um, computers and monitors were, you know, the, the setups that people had was different in 92. It's a long time ago. And not many people had dual monitors or indeed widescreen monitors. So, you know, it's, uh, it's probably the way it comes from then. You've got your spell, your MC, let's have a look at that. I don't think it stands for Midnight Commander, but I'll have a look. Oh, it's a count. A word count. Oh, it says WC. I thought it said MC. My eyesight is going. So you got sort, number lines, make, expand, and expand. I like that word count actually. It's uh, it does it does get some of it. It's no fussing around. So you can add your own um, commands there if you wish. The macro is uh, where you learn your keystrokes. If you've got a, a familiar, an often repeated um, set of commands that you like to uh, like to do, like keystrokes, or you you know you you insert, and, uh, this will do it for you. If you want to sort of always start a document by inserting your address at the top. And then justifying it, and then increasing these, it, it will do it for you. So you could do all them things manually every single time, or you could like to learn it as a uh, learn the keystrokes, and then implement it. It's almost like a copy and paste of the actions you do to get things done. So it, that, that's quite an interesting feature. You can finish learning, you can cancel the learning, or replay the keystrokes and repeat. Complete word. Uh, let's have a look. Complete word. Hmm. I'll have to look into that. Uh, quote mail reply and unquote mail reply. Oh, okay. That must be you can tie it into emails if you wish. And your window thing. Your window thing. Your window menu. Uh, just lets you split the pane so you can have editing tw two at the same time. Let's see if. Yep, it comes up too. I don't know why you would do that, but it's there for you. If anyone knows the answer why you would want it uh, split, then please let me know. 
and then it just tells you the the path uh, which you're editing on detach tab and move tab so if I was to start a new mm, a new file yeah there's the fa there's a the tab and if I go into macro window I mean detach the tab there you go become separate and move tab to that one and you can rejoin it again that is pretty cool so you can work on a new tab split it rejoin it as you fancy you know as you feel like it very good make sure I close the right one hmm so I've never used that one before for so for me that's a discovery so that's pretty cool so that's it that's um pretty much it I mean it is a a text editor which can cater for obviously just blocks of text it's not a word processor it can take the place of a good word processor if you're doing large documents obviously but as a replacement in case you just want to write up something quick or indeed if you're a programmer and you want to use this as your uh, work environment then it's it's more than suited for it I know a lot of programmers who actually have their own little um, favorites and will never change from it and that's fine but you know you know give it a go have a look see what you think if it's any good then you know come back and let me know how you feel because I I have a personal love of um, motif based applications I, I look the f I love the feel the look of them maybe uh, Maybe it's down to my formative years where I saw a lot of, um, it's like late seventies, eighties um, computers with uh, the common desktop environment running, and of course that has a, a motif-based uh, window decorations and the look and the feel. So for me, I mean, yes, you know, on this particular computer I could run uh, the latest KDE and GNOME and uh, all the rest of them, but I. But I have a calling back to simple window managers, and in particular, I think I'm split between uh, Motif Window Manager, uh, JWM, which is Joe's Window Manager, and TWM, which is Tom's Window Manager. I, yeah, I, I, I'm more towards Motif, but I appreciate the other two, the, in particular the TWM, because it's in FreeBSD anyway. It's actually part of the uh, it's org um, package when you install it. So you, right from the bat, if you have a t if you have the uh, the config file at hand on a USB somewhere or or whatever, you could email it to yourself. You just slot that into your home folder, and instantly you can replicate the look and feel with the menu applicator, everything of you your TWM. There's no it's because it uses one single config file. That that then dictates how it looks and feels across multiple machines as soon as you've uh, installed Exog. I mean, yeah, there are things like you know X defaults, X resources, which will change some of the customization, some of the look, some of the feel. But the the, the core essentials is there every time, and to me that's, that's brilliant. So it makes administrating uh, a computer online a long way away. If someone want something adding or or they want it fixing somewhere because it's not doing what they want if they're running motive window manager and you know I mean it's it's a, a fantastic uh, VNC window manager to use because it, it's very low in resources then you can easily fix it but that's my own personal thing um, I like Nedit I use Nedit all the time I'm using it now to uh, to edit the script for this, um, as you probably can tell, that this particular segment is not scripted, so I'm rambling a bit. But bear with me. But Nedit feels clean. It may look old, and it's it's got it's missing some of the uh, the fancy pizzazz of newer text editors. And for me, it gets the job done. I mean, it's either this one or the default EE or the edit uh, which is available on FreeBSD 
Uh, in fact, I'll show you that. We can bring a window up. There you go. Win it. Edit test. This is the um, the one that I also use. I do particularly like this. I like the colour scheme on it. It took me a while to get it right, but it just looks like an old-fashioned monitor. But I like that. Uh, it gets the job done. But Nedda, if you're gonna, if I if I'm gonna use a graphical um, text editor, I think Nedda is my second to choice. Is my first choice for a graphical editor, and my second choice as a text editor in general. And I like it very much. Some people won't like it, but that's you know it's a matter of opinion. It's how it's how you feel. It's how you you the best way for you to get your workflow done. I think to suit your best for workflow. Anyway, thank you very much, and I'll catch you next time.